flipping care anymore. <laughs> press that button there. Which one? The down button. Oh, the down button. Yeah. Right, I'll probably yeah. press the up button, you do realise. <laughs> so, James, my God, your slides are much better than mine. <laughs> Well, that's true, yeah, that's true. So, yeah, I don't have the pink hair anymore. Um, I had to make a decision because I've, I'm really white, <laughs> so it was really hard to keep it up. But anyway, so this is me. This is me, 26 years old. <laughs> I found this picture when we were cutting our house, babe. Yeah. Um, and I joined in 2001. I joined Hertfordshire Police. Um, my brother has less hair than that now as well. It's <laughs> bald as a coot. Um, uh, and I loved my job. I joined with my husband, Jack, at the back. Um, we met at training school and we both absolutely loved our jobs. And I got promoted in 2006, still loved my job. Um, I couldn't get enough of it, really. I wanted to get promoted all the time. Um, and then I had a child. <laughs> and your priorities changed completely. So um, she was a long time coming. Um, and my life completely changed and I ended up with postnatal depression so I had a real I did struggle a bit from 2009 um, and then my heart, mental health started to really deteriorate around 2014 uh, when I was diagnosed with ME which is chronic fatigue syndrome um, and then in 2016 to add to everything else um, I was told that I had PTSD which is a cumulative form of PTSD where because we as police officers see a lot of trauma on a daily basis our brains kind of fall over and mine fell over spectacularly didn't it babe <laughs> big time <laughs> um, and I didn't get the support that I wanted from the job it was rubbish it was absolutely rubbish and actually I ended up going through sickness procedures so bearing in mind I was ill because of the job they were making me go through sickness procedures to try and get me out of the job it was just ridiculous so I um, I really didn't feel like I was being supported um, and I wanted to be able to help myself. I've always been quite self-aware. Um, I'm really into self-development, bits and bobs like that. So I thought I'll try and help myself. Um, but I knew I needed to get out of the job because I ended up being put into a back office and all I kept thinking to myself, this was 2017, I can't do this for the next 20 years. I can't work in victim service team for the next 20 years. It will kill me. So I started looking. That's my daisy. Um, and um, I begged and pleaded, Jack, please let me have a dog. Please let me have a dog. And he was like, you're not having a dog. And I was like, I am having a dog. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, but the really crazy thing about it was Jack found Daisy. This is the crazy thing. I was at work one day, you know, tapping around on my computer, got a phone call. Um, there's a DC over in Hatfield and she's getting rid of her beagle. Get off the phone, let me ring her. <laughs> Just get off the phone. So I rung the, um, uh, what was her name? Sonia, that's it. She's nuts, by the way. Um, <laughs> and uh, I went over, we saw Daisy and I fell in love with her. She was this bouncy, bloody thing, and I didn't know anything about beagles at the time, you know, and we were just like, yeah, we'll take her. And my daughter got in the car and she went, I don't want her. I was like, what? She was like, I want the chihuahua. <laughs> I was like, you're not having the chihuahua, it's not happening. I said, let's, let's let have her for a weekend and we'll see how it goes. And even Jack was like, yeah, we'll see how it goes. My brain, I'm going to stain. It's, <laughs> it's, not, it's not even going home, you know, it's, it's, it's staying with me. Um, and this, I mean, she looks really young then, doesn't she? She's not that young anymore. Um, she was two and she's now nearly seven. But she changed everything for me. I mean, I can't, I know it sounds stupid, but I can't thank her much more, really. Um, she completely changed my life. Uh, and before then, <laughs> Jack's going to laugh at this, I tried everything. I tried Reiki, I did Indian has head massage. I even had a little studio in my house, didn't we? You set me up a little studio. I painted, I crafted, Alex knows what I'm about to say next, I even wrote erotica, um, <laughs> it's not in my name so you can't find it, um, but I thought to myself, do you know what, I'm going to write, I wanted to write and I thought, oh do you know what, let's just do the biggest and most boldest thing I can do, so yeah, I've written two, two erotica books now, um, would I do it again, no, uh, and then I did a copy editing, and then, of course, Daisy came into my life um, and she really was such hard work, wasn't she? She destroyed our house. 
She um, destroyed Jack's VR headset that he'd had less than 24 hours. And when I rung him, I shouldn't really have thought about when I was going to ring him because I rung him whilst he was driving to tell him that this VR headset was no more. And all I could hear was, fuck it, fuck, 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 as he's slamming his hands on the steering wheel. I was like, oh, shit. Um, and then I thought, well, I'm going to have to get her trained. So I went to a trainer. And all he said to me was, why would you get Beagle? They're stubborn, they're selfish, um, they're unintelligent, they can't be let off lead. And I got in my car and I cried as I was like, oh, my God, how am I going to how is Jack going to let me keep this dog? It's destroying our house. It was it was mental. I can't even explain how mental she was. <laughs> so I um, needed some I needed something else as well. And I said to Jack, can I get another dog? <laughs> he was like, no, you're not having another dog. But I kind of found, I fell into um, home boarding. So if you don't know what home boarding is, it's basically your dog stays at your home. So if you've got a dog, I look after it in our home. Jack hated it. <laughs> oh my God, he hated it. And then I started getting um, my clients saying to me, on your days off from the police, will you look after my dog? So I ended up being a daycare person as well. Um, and then I started that quite February and by the July I was able to um, have a career break so I managed to build that up really really quickly but we also did do um, quite a savvy thing so we took money out of our house um, because you know it's sitting there do something with it um, and we took half my salary out so I could build my business and oh I've got five minutes how the fuck did that happen <laughs> <laughs> um, okay so Oh no, I'm sorry. I do swear a lot. It's a, it's, it's a you know, <laughs> it's a little bit. <laughs> um, so basically, um, I then started learning dog behaviour to train my own dog, and then I had a conversation with a lovely lady. I don't know if any of you know Kate Rain. She is on the on the cohorts. She told me about Alex. I rang Alex the next day. <laughs> Alex went, yeah, that's a really good idea. I was like, oh, thank fuck for that. <laughs> um, and then I had to tell him. Do you remember? Yep. <laughs> he was like, <laughs> he was like, well, who is this snake oiled man? <laughs> and, um, but I managed to persuade him and thank God I did. So I joined in 2019 um, and at the time I was building, um, I had a physical business and then I also was seeing beagles, but I was traveling two hours a day to go and see these beagles. Covid hit 20, 2020. I lost my daycare and my home boarding within 24 hours. It was gone. Um, people obviously couldn't go on holiday, people were working from home, couldn't afford me. And I remember thinking to myself, what on earth am I going to do? This idiot wanted me to go back to the police. <laughs> Love you, babe. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then he suggested I became a St. Jude's delivery driver. Do you remember? <laughs> I was just like, I'm not doing that. So um, I had toyed with going online. So I started doing free webinars and then I started doing packages and then it just it just spiraled. It just went mental really quickly. So from March, so I started it in March and every month after that, I just doubled my salary. It was just like, how is this? I don't understand how this is happening. This is amazing. Um, so now uh, a year on, uh, um, I work solely online, all on Zoom. I don't work with people one to one at all because it's too time consuming. I work all in groups of four people. Um, and Jack doesn't know this because I did my maths for this. He's going to be like, whoop, whoop. Um, in so six months, is, uh, we are now, aren't we, of the, this financial year, I've earned 40 grand. Oh. <laughs> oh. Um, I still, I still can't believe it when I look at the figures. I really can't, and I, I can't thank, I can't thank. Where are they? There's Robin. Where's James? There he is. What's your price? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! How many bloody times did you say that to me? Yeah, I know, I know you do, I know you do. Um, but I work in multiple countries now. I've got clients in Canada. I've got clients in oh shit in America. Um, I've written a chapter for a Beagle handbook and I'm re oh, I forgot to tell you this, I'm starting to get clients from that. <laughs> yeah. um, they read the book and then they come and find me. Um, and um, I'm asked to talk about my business and my social media because I've got 18,000 people on my Facebook group now, which... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So all my work comes from Facebook 
Um, so the future, Guernsey. Yeah. Moving to Guernsey in the new year due to this lovely man. Um, so we made a choice to change our whole lives and based on the fact that I have an online business, I can work anywhere I want. Um, and that was the dream. So that's what we're doing, 4th of January, uh, we're off. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I do not. No. Um, so again, my whole whole thing is I've got someone who works on my Instagram now, and she's really getting my exposure up on Instagram. Um, and I'm starting a new business in the new year when we move to Guernsey, which is where I teach people, a bit like what you did for me. So it's like you know, teaching me, and I'm teaching others um, how to build a pet niche business. So that's my next little project. Um, and then, oh, that's me. Did I do that? Is that the right way? So what would I say to you guys? Um, believe this man. <laughs> believe that man. Believe that man. <laughs> but where's Sapno? Is she here? No, no. Believe everybody on the course. Um, yes, I did butt up against it. Robin will tell you there was times when he was like, put your prices up. I'm like, I'm not doing them, I'm doing that. Um, and then <laughs> James was like, what's your price? 900 quid. Oh, really? No. Um, but I would just throw yourselves in. Um, because from twen March 2020 to now, I have a business that works for me and I have a life and I don't have any mental health problems and I have another beagle and I love my life. So, yeah. <laughs>